done, and you know, in in private, and not anybody, and not everybody knows about it. And when I try and talk to people about privatising the uh, the health service, they don't believe me. They couldn't do that, could they? The other thing that I'm particularly worried about is the TTIP, because not many people know about the transatlantic, whatever it is, investment partnership. Which, if it goes ahead and can uh, can people, people hear? Me? Sorry, I'm can hear people. Can you hear me? Sorry. I think you used to maybe bring the mic up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing, I'm talking about people not understanding that the health service is being privatised, and that's partly due to the having the NHS logo on the privatised facilities. The other thing I'm very concerned about, which very few people know, is this trans transatlantic investment partnership, which if it goes ahead and Cameron signs, we've lost the NHS, because the US and the EU health companies that are privatised will actually just come in and gobble all our health services. So just for people to take note that this really needs to be seriously considered and also to write to your MP about it. That's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Yeah. And Dave? Hello. Um, I'm Dave McElfin. I'm a Labour candidate for Tony Three. One of the things I'd like to say is that in my experience, the perfect is often the enemy of the merely good. What we need is the widest possible unity about the campaign to save Charing Cross Hospital. Now, as a Labour candidate, uh, as a, I have to support our party's policy, but we do have disagreements. And one of the things I'd say is that, of course, we did have some achievements in the last Labour government. We increased the amount of money that was being spent on the NHS. Uh, up to the average that's being spent in the EU countries. And I'm very grateful, as a prostate cancer sufferer, that they reduced the time between diagnosis and treatment from over a year in some cases to 13 weeks. That saved a lot of lives, and I think we should recognise that fact. I mean, obviously, market ideology has played a very prominent role right up to 2007. We're only just getting out of it. We're only just getting into the idea that you know the market for housing, for example, can be adjusted. It doesn't always have to be with the up with the landlords. It could be adjusted back towards ordinary people, tenants, and so on. And that's the same with I think the issue of competition in the NHS. We need to pull this back so it is competition, not on the basis of finance, but perhaps competition between some NHS organisations. Um, I remember visiting a sock factory in the USSR, and it always puzzled me, how were you, how were you going to, in a totally socialised economy, how were you going to make sure that the capital went to the place that made the best socks? Now, there is a problem there, and I think it's one we have to recognise. But I'd like to close on a particular point. People like Crispin and in the local Labour Party, the Chiswick Labour Party, we have no councillors, we have no members on the Labour group, but using the demonstration democratic structures of the Labour Party, we were able to get a motion to the Labour Group which became the official policy of House of Council, and that is to keep Charing Cross Hospital open. Who voted against that policy? The Conservatives. And they put through that policy, and if we achieve a majority, an increased majority, I hope, on May the 22nd, we will continue to push the House of Council to put its weight behind this campaign. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, one more person has put their hand up, and in the interest of democracy, this gentleman here, if you could be brief, sir. Thank you, Chair. Rashid Bhatti, standing in Riverside uh, on behalf of the Labour Party. Uh, very pleased to hear many wise words being spoken here today. All I know is healthy people make healthy nations. We need to do everything possible to save all hospitals, obviously the nearest one in London, and many others in the country that could go. Uh, this is health system, health national health system, is one of our wealth in the country. That makes this nation a great nation. And I'd just like to add, London is no longer uh, a London for England. It is here in England, but it's international city. We need to be proud of it, and because it's international, we need to allow all people to come in here. 
and serve our community, our country the best they can. Thank you on that. And just like you to take one message for me, please, that there is no representation from the Tories. Should they be elected? Should you be voting for them? Please go and speak and spread the word. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think the people on the top table are now going to have a difficult problem because they've got, say, two and a half minutes to sum up. But what we wanted them to address really was uh, the question was, what have you done to save Charing Cross Hospital and what do you think needs to be done in reality to save it now? Um, I'm going to do people in the reverse order, which means that Louise, who's travelled so far from Lewisham, so thank you so much for coming today, Louise, um, will start first. Thank you very much. Um, it's difficult for me because I have got multiple hats and um, I know that in my role um, involved in the Save Lewisham Hospital campaign and others like Charles, we have helped and supported and shown solidarity with the Save Charing Cross and Hammersmith and Charing Cross Hospitals campaign as well as Ealing campaign and others. And I think that is key. It's local campaigns that are really doing the most everywhere to, to look after, preserve their NHS services. But as a, as a political party, I think our contribution can be on some of the big picture stuff. The Charing Cross Hospital, as I said, is part of the whole threat to the whole NHS. There's a big narrative about we can get rid of half our hospitals. We don't really need them. We can just have a few specialist hospitals for specialist conditions and the rest can all be done in the community. This is really dangerous. It's being repeated everywhere. It's really important to challenge that. And we actually have in the NHA public health, public health specialists and others who are formulating a very serious critique of, of, of this. And I think that getting those counter arguments out to the public is vital. Challenging privatisation, challenging the cuts is what we are trying to do as a party. The future of the NHS is under extreme threat. Um, and that's why we believe we need to keep on campaigning and fighting. Um, I, I do want to talk a bit about Labour because um, obviously as a GP for 25 years, I do acknowledge that under the Labour government, a lot improved. There was increased funding for the NHS. The waiting times went down dramatically and services expanded. And I, it would be wrong of me to deny that. But it's as if Labour government was a sort of hybrid organisation. On the one hand, this strand, which came in more to, well, at the beginning of the Labour, which was actually positive. But in parallel, you had Alan Milburn and his cronies pushing and pushing and pushing privatisation. So that was also like two, two horses. And that actually laid the groundwork for a lot of what um, is being done by the coalition. And one of the reasons that they Labour finds it difficult to stand up and challenge what the coalition's done, is they can just retort, well, you did that, you said that, and caught them back at it. So they, they do need to say, look, we were wrong. We were wrong, and I think people will, uh, will um, admire them for that and say we need to move forward. And Labour has moved a bit. Um, Andy, um, Andy Burnham has said that they want, uh, he, well, he's fighting for NHS to be exempted from TTIP and also for repeal of the Health and Social Care Act. That is some movement. Not really hearing it from Miliband. He's really coy about it. The party political broadcast hardly didn't mention any of the fundamental issues. Just said, we'll get you to see a GP within 48 hours. Um, we have put on pressure on Labour. Labour is a hybrid. It, it, there are tensions within the Labour Party, and I, and I know that's reality. We need to keep that pressure up. I think our existence helps us to, to do that, because they'll have to move before we can trust them again with the NHS. Absolutely. Um, and I think the National Health Action Party therefore has a key role in actually um, in in actually being a kind of galvanising force and, and a spearhead and raising the issues, raising awareness, and actually threatening some of the comfortable um, positions that some people in the different um, leading political parties are in. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Once again, thanks for making the long journey over from Lewisham. Uh, Rash Paul from the Green Party next. On 10th of October 1908, Chester said, and I quote, What is the use, use of living if it be not to strive for noble causes and to make this mother world a better place for those who will live in it after we are gone? 
I believe he encompasses all that needs to be said. And finally, I'll quote George Bernard Shaw. He said, progress is impossible without change. And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. I think this government in particular must change their mind. And if Labour thinks that they are going to change their mind, they should come out of their shell and say so. Well, I apologize about uh, my alarm. That was the alarm warning me of a parking ticket that's uh, due. Um, I'd like to, first of all, thank you all for coming down here. Um, there's a lot of people who are walking past, I'm sure, who are not here. Um, you're here supporting SOH. The people outside and the people who haven't attended here um, are the ones who are going to need uh, Charing Cross and uh, Hammersmith Hospitals. Um, so it's down to your campaign and everything that you're doing to try and save them. Um, I do not support the closures of A&E, um, but I wish uh, SOH the very best of luck with their campaign. And also I'd like to wish my fellow colleagues or candidates here the very best of luck in their forthcoming elections. And thank you very much for having me here. Um, yeah, I want to stand up to, uh, for the grand finale. Um, now, I, 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 uh, I'm a bit dispirited that the attendance isn't so great today. It, it, it wasn't really publicised as, as much as it could have been, but we're, we're here and this is what we've got. And, and for me, um, we need to be united on this. I've heard stuff about Ed, uh, Tony Blair and, 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 and Ed Miliband and, and, and whatever. But we need to be united. We need to have Greens, we need to have Lib Dems, we need to have Tories. Some Tories aren't that bad, I think. Um, we need to have UKIP. We need to have all of, all of the parties together on one voice saying we don't want Charing Cross to close. Um, we don't really want to get into fighting each other on this. This is not going to help at all. We need experience and expertise. I mean, the NHA party is very useful, as is Save Our Hospitals to me. They give a lot of information that we wouldn't get elsewhere, and I really value that. But I think we do have to be united, and we also have to be united across boroughs. We need Hammersmith and Fulham with Hounslow and Ealing, and we don't need to fight our separate battles. We, can, we all know it's the same thing. And these T-shirts, which talk about those hospitals they're, they're, all, they're all in the same boat. Um, I'd love you all to, to go out from here and try and get people to canvas and campaign for Thursday's election because um, this is really the best way the Tories will be given a, a kick up the whatever. And, um, and once that happens, they will, they will rethink it. I mean, it, it, it's been said that the only way you can change things is through the ballot box. And I believe that I have been on demonstrations, but when it comes down to it, just putting a cross in a box does make a difference. And if we can get as many people to, to vote on, on Thursday in Chiswick and other areas for Labour or for those parties who are opposed to the, to the, to the closure of Charing Cross Hospital effectively, that would be great. Thank you.